All right, Jang. Let's do this. <laughs> Here we go. So as I was saying earlier, I had a very monumental moment for myself. So I, I immediately realized when I was triggered and I was just like, I'm triggered, I have to walk away. I have to get some air. I have to get my mind back. I am triggered so much right now. And then the person kept wanting to talk to me and I was like, nope, 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 nope. Like I won't have a discussion with you. I am triggered. And I, the next few things I'm about to say, are gonna be very hurtful, they're not gonna be very helpful. And it was great because I just drove my little happy ass away, put on a good song, took some time for myself, and I'm back. I got this. So today has been a little rough so far. And it's all my fault. I have to fully admit it's my fault. And what I'm about to share with you guys is life changing and life altering. And the fact that I'm recognizing it so soon this time makes me very proud of myself. So, we're gonna talk about shame today because shame is ultimately one of the worst emotions a human could have or feel. So, when you have a lot of shame, you tend to be a very low vibration type of person that honestly feels like they're not worthy of doing anything at all. My life story. I constantly bring myself shame. And yes, I bring it to myself. Because when you are a good person, so many things that you do wrong bother you so much more deeply than a lot of other people. Even having a big heart hurts yourself in the long run because you end up caring way too much and try to do way too much for other people and you hold standards for yourself way too high. Oh man, why is it shaky? You know when like you know your camera is a sensitive asshole? No, you're a beautiful, nice, genuine soul camera. I love you and I care about you. It's just not shaky. And so just to get off my chest, what what is basically going wrong right now? Um, so shame, I'm a really a good person and I love people way too much and I try really hard for everyone around me. And normally I disappoint myself and I end up disappointing, I don't know. I just, I bring myself shame. And I have to fix it all today because I'm not going to go down a vicious cycle like this. So basically, shame could come from my situation with my father. So obviously, my dad's not in my life for various reasons. And just you not ha allowing someone into your life is very shameful, if you ask me. Because you know they want to be in your life. And you're the, I'm the type of person that constantly sees the better in people and wants to give them another chance and believe they change. And everyone always tells me people don't change, but I do. And it's really hard for me to like ignore his text messages and ignore his calls. It brings me a lot of shame at the end of the day. And I just need to be open with my dad and be like, look, you're a great person. And I just need to be kind, but just tell him, like, I need my space. And by me avoiding that situation is just bringing me shame. Because he is calling me. He is trying to text me. And I'm just straight up annoying, ignoring him. And that will bring you shame. I don't know why, but I'm having the hardest time with just things around the house right now. Because I've always... I've lived in a house by myself before. 
and my other house, you know, I've been there before. But this house, it's kind of all me. All the decorating, all the cleaning, everything in the fridge, everything in the pantry, it's all me. Like I do everything and I am doing everything and I'm totally fine doing it with everything. But so many things in the houses break all the time and so many things are really hard to do and I've never had to do them in my life or I never wanted to do them good, I guess. Like now I actually care about how the lawn looks and how the backyard looks. Like I'm transitioning to a point in my life where I want to be a real adult, not a kid adult. Like I wanna, have, I wanna be an adult where I have all of my shit together I don't rely on my mom or dad. Well, I don't rely on my dad to begin with anything, but just my mom, like, I wanna know that I never have to, like, talk to her again about anything financially. Like, I want to, if anything, like, I wanna give my mom money and, like, help my mom out. Like, I wanna be a full-ass adult. I don't wanna be, like, a kid adult anymore, so I'm having a really hard time uh, I'm like just being really hard on myself. I'm being abnormally hard on myself because even the way I want the house, lots of adults are fine with it being semi-messy and semi-not organized and it literally eats me up inside. Everything has to be perfect. Um, I'm scaring myself by how hard on myself I am about this stuff and how much I worry about what it looks like and how clean it is. And honestly, I think it's because a lot of the clients at the ranch will come by to just say hi or to drop off a check or to grab something they forgot at the ranch like people just come by the house and obviously when you open up your door to people that you serve and you have a business like your business serves them you want it to be impeccable like that's when business and personal lives mesh and that's what makes it really hard sometimes because you just a business you have to be a certain way and personal like you can be a little bit laid back but now there is no laid back it's just like shh. it's like it's like being a house I used to visit as a kid like I used to go to people's houses that were like this and I saw how much effort and work went into it and I was like damn my house doesn't do this but now that I'm like wanting to have that house it's just like how do I do this <laughs> like I'm teaching myself how to be a person I've never been before and it's really freaking hard because every day I go against who I am as a person because I don't want to be that person anymore like I, I hated the old me so I'm doing all these things that are really uncomfortable and they're really annoying I'm hoping that one day they become easier but just today it was so overwhelming like just today I'm just so frustrated with the standards I am holding myself up to at this very moment and I just wanted to, the, like that old me just wanted a day to just like, I don't know, acknowledge that this is really freaking hard. Like this is so hard. I am doing really, <laughs> even my friends right now that are in my life, um, they didn't see my life prior to this. I mean, they saw it through social media, but they never saw it in person. And I don't look at myself as doing a lot. I just kind of think every 24 year old does what I do or did what I used to do. Cause I used to actually do a lot more than what I do now, but I didn't have to do as much as I'm doing right now. If that makes sense. Anyway, um, she was like, <laughs> Because we went up to Yosemite the other day and she was like, thank God. And she was like, seriously, like I've never seen someone work so hard. I've never seen someone be as nonstop as you are. And I just really was like, what? And she was like, no, like seriously, you work so freaking hard all the time. And I work for a very small business. It's Jeremy's business. So it's not like I have a boss that's like, good job. It's like did you do this? Cause it's like expected of me and I get it. Like I took on the responsibility of it. I get that I'm that role, but it's like a role where you don't even get acknowledged. And you're just like, <laughs> and just today I just was like, ugh, Bruin. 
They're just absolutely brewing. That's okay. We're back on track. I took my moments. And I literally have one of the most beautiful lives, so I don't even get the right to complain. Like, I actually do not have the right right now to complain because I live such an abundant, beautiful life that it actually brings me even more shame and pain that I complain about these things because I am so beyond fortunate to even be in a vehicle right now and be driving myself to a bank, videotaping myself with a camera, with my dog in the back of my car, with shoes and clothes on, a freaking healthy Pop-Tart, an all-organic Pop-Tart, and my book, Knowledge. Do you know how hard it is for anyone in North Korea to just even get their hands on a book, the one I'm reading right now? Like, it's not a thing, so that's part of the shame thing. Like, I, I get to a point where I'm like, you're not allowed to think these things are hard. Like, look at the rest of the world. This is easy. And there's this constant balance in my head that I'm like, what am I supposed to be? <laughs> but I'm back to reality. Everything is okay. Nothing is that terrible. But we're humans and we have human emotions and we are creatures of our environment so sometimes I go back to the human experience and feel very stressed out and get myself a little too worked up when I realize one day I'm gonna burst into an energy matter and be spiraling all throughout this place and be reincarnated into a bunny or something <laughs> that's just my beliefs anyway but yeah, I just need to complain for a sec. But as you guys can tell, like, I'm pretty good at snapping myself out of it and just being like, no, not today, mother chucka. And honestly, um, I also have some footage of the workouts I have been doing every single night and the brain workouts I have been doing every single night. I still don't know what I want to call a brain workout. Maybe you guys can help me out on that. I literally want it to be a cool name, but I guess when you say like I'm going to go work out, like we're just like, okay, like I want it to be like where people know you're going to go do like a brain workout. But I don't want it to be a brain workout, so maybe we could come up with a cool word for a brain workout, but I've been doing them every night. I've been doing this one called EFT. It's a tapping therapy, and it's known to release anxiety. And honestly, after watching videos of it, I completely understand the reasoning behind it because the whole time you're saying affirmations, and I think you're using what I feel like is going on is you're using so many of your senses. You're touching yourself, you're looking yourself in the eye, you're telling yourself everything's gonna be okay. And like, it's very powerful, it's very beautiful, and I've been doing a lot, and I honestly feel a difference, and there's gonna be a new exercise I'm gonna try tonight where you grab two chairs and you sit across from one chair and whatever is bugging you or whatever makes you mad or if you want to even go into deeper childhood stuff you envision the first person you think of that ch abused you and you get really mad about it. you sit with some of the memories and then you get up and you sit on the other chair and then you feel you because once you think about those things just for a little bit, like you're leaving that energy there. And then after you sit there for a second and breathe, you're supposed to go and grab sage. And then you're supposed to sage that chair area and forgive all of those memories. Because when you forgive those memories, you are giving it a resolution. And negative emotions and negative traumas continuously happen in your life and come back into your life because they're looking for a resolution. And after hearing that today in this podcast I was listening to, I was just like, oh my god, I'm going straight home and I'm going to go do that, but I figured I should just do it tonight for my meditation and I'm super excited. I'm definitely going to document that one for you because brain workouts, they're coming. 
they are coming in hot. I'm about to rock your guys' world with brain workouts. <laughs> but I don't want to call it that. I want to call it, I don't know. I want you guys to name it. Help me name it. Let's make, let's make this thing. Let's make this a thing. All right. I'm going to enjoy the rest of this drive because when I'm having a really, really rough day, I've noticed that all I need to do is go drive, not like a five minute drive, like actually get on a highway, go to another town, sit down at a coffee shop, get yourself a coffee, read a good book, and just get yourself out of that place. Like don't stay where your anger lies. Like. Don't like you know when you're upset with a person and you guys fight and then you guys are in the same house but then like it just keeps on going back and forth back and forth back and forth I think that's because that stagnant energy is there I think you really do I after arguments and things I really think it should be a thing to like sage your space and like forgive it and move on because it, it's like stagnant energy and I'm learning that once you leave it and change all your senses, you change what you're eating, you change what you're doing, your mind is able to focus on other things and let that situation go for a little bit. And then when you go back on that drive and drive back wherever it is that you were angry prior, you have a whole different mindset and it's a lot more calmer, it's a lot more at ease, it's a lot more third party perspective rather than just ego, ego, ego. But yeah, so I'm going to enjoy the rest of this drive and I'll see you guys probably doing another brain workout soon. Alright, today is day one of EFT tapping training. So, I've been talking about it Ugh long enough to start doing mental workouts, brain workouts, whatever, workouts. Workouts that just focus purely on healing myself rather than running from myself. You know, fitness does do a great job at suppressing it, pushing it down. I was into fitness for the wrong reasons. I was never into fitness for the right reasons. It's hard to explain, but that is why I'm going to start doing mental workouts along with fitness workouts. I just have to figure out the right type of mental workouts that work for me. So I was reading a book today on my phone, Gabrielle Bernstein, Judgment Detox, and it's so weird because it was just divine timing. Um, Gabrielle Bernstein, first of all, is like the person that got me back into spirituality. She's the one that got me into wanting to see a therapist and a life coach. She has helped my life more than I could ever let you guys in on. So any book that she has written, I just obsess over. And this is her newest book. And it's weird because she started talking about this EFT therapy that she started doing and how much it helped her life. And it immediately made me just want to try it and do it. So I spent the past 30 minutes researching EFT tapping therapy and I decided to choose it as my mental workout of the day. So to see if this is like a type of therapy that works for me. And what it basically does is it helps with anxiety it also helps with letting go of fear and just letting go of the emotion and you tap on like these 10 points on your body and then here and here yeah and you do it two times saying one thing two times saying another thing two times saying another thing and then the last two are the regular way it's interesting, um, but I want to give it a shot and show you guys how I feel after. This is my very first time doing it. No idea what I'm supposed to expect, 
but we're gonna go for it. And it does seem like it takes quite some time because you have to do it so many times, but we're gonna do it. Even though I still have some anger about my childhood trauma, I deeply and profoundly love and accept myself. Even though I still have some anger about my childhood trauma, I deeply and profoundly love and accept myself. Even though I still have some anger about my childhood trauma, I deeply and profoundly love and accept myself. Even though I still have some anger about my childhood trauma, I deeply and profoundly love and accept myself. Even though I have I still have some anger about my childhood trauma, I deeply and profoundly love and accept myself. Even though I still have anger about my childhood trauma, I deeply and profoundly love and accept myself. Even though I still have anger about my childhood trauma, I deeply and profoundly love and accept myself. Even though I have some anger, even though I still have some anger about my childhood trauma, I deeply and profoundly love and accept myself. Even though I have some anger about my childhood trauma, I deeply and profoundly love and accept myself. Even though I have even though I still have some anger about my childhood trauma, I deeply and profoundly love and accept myself. Even though I still have so this is the second round where you acknowledge that it went down a notch. So even though I still have some anger about my childhood trauma, I deeply and profoundly love and accept myself. Even though I still have some anger about my childhood trauma, I deeply and profoundly love and accept myself. Even though I still have some anger about my childhood trauma, I deeply and profoundly love and accept myself. I release the remaining anger about my childhood trauma. I deeply and profoundly love and accept myself. I release the remaining anger about my childhood trauma. I deeply and profoundly love and accept myself. I release the remaining anger about my childhood trauma. I deeply and profoundly love and accept myself. I deeply and profoundly love and accept myself. Okay. And we're gonna sage the shit out of this area. This is essential. Ow! Burnt me. This is essential to getting rid of those energies. I was listening to the podcast yesterday about how important saging, the space of healing is. Like you have to sage that shit away, man. So I'm gonna get all these little areas they had me tapping. Right here. So honestly, I don't want to work out, like, at all. Not for even two seconds. And normally when I'm like that, it means I won't go, I won't leave my room. My room is like my cave. I just feel so safe here. It's my home. <laughs> so I bring the workout to my home. I actually started working out in my room when I was like 15, 16. And I literally like would work out for like two hours by myself in my room. I literally feel like I'm my 14, 15, 16 year old self again. So it's just so bizarre that I'm literally back in my room working out. But you know, a room workout is better than no workout. And one day, I know I'll be back to killing the game. Just gotta take baby steps to get there. So here is my introvert in your own bedroom workout. And I'm using a 20 pound dumbbell. Yeah, so here goes nothing.
So that's round one. And so we did squat press, which is a full body movement. We did just regular squat, but with a really high squeeze at the top to really get that booty burning. Then we did weighted lunges, that's for the quads and the glutes still. And then we did bicep curl, which is your biceps and your back. And then we did rows, which are your back and biceps. This is a full body workout in just one session with one little dumbbell and still, still getting the job done of working out. This is great for beginners that are just wanting to get back into the groove of things, but where you're still really uncomfortable and still really in that ready place where you feel like you can't do anything for yourself. This gives you the satisfaction of still being in your safe haven, your room, but like also getting shit done. So I normally take like a minute break and I'll just start writing my journal.